All right, guys, welcome back to The Shack. And tonight, we're going to be addressing a topic that keeps coming up a lot, both in the lives on Sunday night as well as through email and messenger and stuff like that and some of my socials. And the question that I get asked a lot is, Clack, I've started my laser business. I'm wanting to add a Galvo. Which should I get? Should I get a fiber or should I get a UV? And that question depends. But I'm going to go over my stance on that question and where I feel like that answer lies for me in my circumstance. So if your circumstances of trying to do one-offs and stuff is similar to what I got going on here with my little laser side business, then stick around and I'll give you my opinion on the topic and you can use that information to make a better decision. So stick around. And we'll be right back. So I just want to make sure we clarify that I am not the, 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 the guy with all the answers. I'm giving you my opinion based on which one of these machines I use when it comes down to actual jobs. Not reviews, not you know doing videos to show companies stuff. When people walk through that door and say, hey, I've got this and I need you to engrave it. Which machine do I go to? That's to me how I decide how to answer that question for you guys. So, as we all know, to do really deep engraving on metals and to do the color, as everybody says, you need a MOPA. And yes, I have a MOPA. It's really handy for deep engravings and knives and stuff like that. It does a great job. That's about all I use it for, okay? I can do some stuff on acrylics, and some stuff on like copper and brass and so forth. I, but to be honest, most of the stuff that I do, I don't use this machine as much. Now, when you need to do deep engraving, this is the go-to as far as you got to have this guy. Okay. But I went back and I looked through my invoices and looked through all the stuff that I have done. The stuff that's coming into the shop that I'm actually billing and I'm getting paid for, of course, a lot of it is either done on a CNC or one of my big oh, yeah. lasers. And, you know, doing a 30-inch sign, none of these machines can do that. So I'm, I'm not really talking about those kind of jobs. I'm talking about the, the, the sports stuff. You know, the baseballs, the baseball gloves, uh, the, the different little uh, metal pieces that you can put, like the anodized metal stuff. There's a lot of little jobs that have came in that I've had to use uh, a Galvo machine for, but it's always, I keep going to the Omni every time. Uh, just this past weekend, had a guy brought in a couple of baseball gloves uh, for his uh, son and his nephew, and those two baseball gloves, I didn't ask until the job was over, but those two baseball gloves were 200-ish dollar gloves. And so when I'm presented with an object that it's leather, it's a, it's a nice ball glove. So I know it's leather. So I've got a good idea where the settings need to be, but I don't have anything to use to test. I always wind up going with the Omni. And the reason being guys is the Omni, that five Watts being only five Watts, it kind of comes in handy with stuff like that. And it will engrave most any surface. I haven't found anything yet that I can't leave a mark on. Now, you're not going to be doing any real deep engraving on some materials with it, but I can mark most anything with the Omni. And that is what has, has, has came through for me. Uh, those baseball gloves. One of them was a blue dyed baseball glove. The other one was a brown baseball glove. And I didn't have time to do settings. I didn't have an extra one to use for a tester. So I went with the Omni. The thing that I've learned about the UV laser and the Omni one is I have settings that I know will mark it. And as long as I don't touch it, I can run that setting three or four times. Uh, if I mark a material, and let's say I mark the material and I don't get the desired color that I want. You can always paint fill. You can always go back and, 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 and touch that up. Uh, with some type of uh, infill on most materials. Now with leather, you're kind of stuck with leather unless you mask it ahead of time. I do not like to try to back backfill uh, leather. So it's pretty much, you're just gonna do a deep engrave and hope it looks good. Uh, but with other materials, like the other day I had a guy brought in uh, two fishing reels and he wanted the names on the fishing reels. These fishing reels were prizes for a fishing tournament here locally. And they were giving them to some folks and they wanted the names put on the fishing reels. 
I had no clue what this material was. It appeared to be either carbon fiber, some type of plastic, polymer, a mixture of both. I didn't know. But the one thing that I did know is that the Omni, the UV laser, was going to mark it regardless of what it was. It was either going to mark it or ablate it to the point to where I could paint fill it. Well, turns out this material apparently did not like to change colors. But I got the, deep, the engrave to go deep enough that I was able to take some white uh, acrylic paint and backfill the engrave and it came out looking sharp. The customer was really happy. I was happy as well because the reels were 300 bucks a piece. So that is why in the past, however long I've had the thing, <laughs> I'll try to put the date up there for you guys. But ever since I've brought this machine into my shop, I've gotten away from using the blue diode galvos and the fiber galvos for most stuff like i said if it's a if it's a, a thick piece of stainless steel or something like that then of course i could go with one of the mopas if i'm going to try to get color but to me the whole color thing is not something that i'm doing for any kind of paying job because it's way too unpredictable for me uh in my in my findings i can do the same piece of material three different days and get three different colors and it's just the cost to determine those settings outweighs the profit for me doing one-offs. Now, if you're doing 500 of something or a thousand of them, maybe it's worth it to you. But for doing one-offs, I have found in my experience and in my job that I do here in my shop, that this guy is the king of one-off custom customization and engraving. Now, like I said, not talking about cutting, not talking about larger things, but the, the great thing about the Omni, I guess pretty much any UV, but more specifically the Omni One, is the fact that all materials are within reach of engraving. And that's what I like. I've done wine glasses. I've done a lot of different things with it. It comes with, I've got the chuck that goes with it here. So it's very versatile for smaller things like that as well. The only big complaint that I have with the Omni currently is this is a little awkward. It works. And the more you use it, the more comfortable you'll get with it. Uh, but this is used to do framing on most materials. Now, there are workarounds. You can sprinkle uh, fluorescent powders on there to get it to reflect from those surfaces if it's something that's really critical. Certain colors, whether it be white or blue or you know some of the, the lighter colors, you can actually see uh, the frame as it's framing. But that's the only big complaint that I've got with the machine so far is that I would like to see you know, an enclosure developed for it or have my own enclosure for it. And that may be something that I build in the future. But so far, guys, to answer the question, because people are always asking me, Clack, if you could only have one of your Galvo machines, which one would it be? For what I do in my shop, the jobs that are brought to me, it's the Omni because, like I said, the sports stuff, the, the acrylics. You know, I made a, I don't know if you saw the video where I made a bunch of little tags, like golf cart tags, uh, out of acrylic. You can do acrylic, you can do Kydex, you can do leather, you can do Lone Star adhesives, uh, you can do most any material, plastics, PLA, if you do 3D printing, uh, all of, just about all of the 3D printable materials you can engrave with the Omni. So that to me is what sets it above. Is it as fast, if you're engraving metals and stuff, is it as fast as a 20 to 30 to 60 watt fiber? No, it is not. So, all right guys, so there it is, all in a nutshell for you. The opinion that I'm sharing with you, like I said, it is my opinion based on my situation. Yours may be different. If you're into more of the metal working or if you're into more, uh, you know, FFL based stuff, that kind of thing, you know, work around a cutlery shop, then maybe your situation is different. But for me, the type of jobs that I draw in based on my clientele, you know, my place in the world as far as geographically, those are the type of jobs that I use the machines for. And with these three machines, typically on most jobs, it's a job that I can do with the Galvo uh, UV. And under in a perfect world, you got all the machines so you can use whichever one you want. But a lot of you guys have expressed to me, you know, that is a lot of money to spend on one machine. And so you want to know which machine is the most versatile. So in my opinion, when it comes to comparing Galvo's machines, the fibers, MOPA, or a UV, by far, money-wise, the UV is going to be the more versatile machine of, of those.
And like I said, a lot of it comes down to the fact that it's a cold burning machine. And so it doesn't melt the plastics and the synthetics and stuff like that that you get into. And so it just affords you a lot more variety and it's a lot less risk when you're trying an unknown material because from my experience so far with the UV, if I don't have the correct settings, the worst thing that's gonna happen is it's not gonna mark it dark enough. And you can usually either just adjust your settings on the fly or run multiple passes and get the desired effect. All right guys, so I hope the video helps and I hope this kind of clears the water on that question that you guys have. Uh, like I said, ComMarker's not paying me to, to make this video or anything like that. I do have an affiliate account with them. I do work with them on machines, machine reviews. This is probably about the eighth video that I've done with the Omni One uh, and since I've gotten it because it is a very versatile machine. I use it on a lot of jobs. Therefore, you know, when you're in the situation I am where you use physical jobs that come into the shop as content, <laughs> when you're using this machine on a lot of the one-offs, it tends to get used more than the others. So there you have it. That's my perspective on the issue. If you have this variety of machines and you have a, an opinion, whether it is the same or differs from mine, please drop it down below. Uh, we try to help people make informed decisions based on other users' experiences. And that's just one person's experience, uh, which is me. And so if you have a different experience, maybe you agree, disagree, whatever the case may be, please share that in the comments down below so that the guys that are they're doing their research and trying to make that decision have the most well-rounded information uh, to make that decision with. So that's it for tonight, guys. Until next time, be safe and have a good day.